Okay, so I'm coming on to the Hasbot Operations Hub free for the first time. Let's have a look. Okay, so let's see how to easily manage data across apps. There is no manual data entry, two-way data sync, and supports 25 apps. So there's an interactive demo there. Let's have a look. We can move some of these. Let's get rid of that, start connecting. Find more apps on the marketplace, helpful information, just some information about what Operations Hub is. It's an operation software designed to help you connect your systems, automate business processes and manage, visualize and operationalize your data. I love that. Operations Hub is available in three editions, free, starter and professional. Each plan is designed to fit a different budget. Uh, and includes tools to solve specific customer problems. This means that you can find a plan to fit your needs, whether you work for a small business or a booming enterprise. Great. So today we're mainly going to be focusing on free. Um, I'll look at some of the others another day. So Data Sync by HubSpot is a new way to join the dots between your apps makes repetitive manual data entry a thing of the past by connecting HubSpot to other apps you use every day you can create syncs that allow you to keep all of your data up to date regardless of where it is i mean that sounds great to me simply follow our quick steps to connect hubspot to another app and we'll do the hard work of bringing your data together so that you don't have to um, what's the difference between syncing and importing when you import your data into hubspot you're bringing in historical data to the point once it's in you'll need to manually add data over time to keep it up to date with a data sync, we will bring in all the historic data and do all the hard work by keeping it up to date over time. Your database will continuously be in sync, meaning that if you make a change in either, it will be reflected in both. No manual data entry is required. Now, this is already sounding awesome to me because I have a use case which is related to onboarding people through our Airtable form, um, and I would like the information to be updated if they also exist in our HubSpot CRM. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. Um, data Sync is perfect for you if you use another app alongside HubSpot and you want to keep up to date data in both. This is what I discussed with Airtable. For instance, if you use another app for email marketing but want to access the same list of contacts in your HubSpot account, Data Sync is an ideal solution for you. So I'm now thinking about how this would be great if you're using any lead generation tools. Um, so if you're using things like you know, Apollo or any of the other lead generation tools for emails can get a two-way sync. How does it work? Browse the app marketplace, um, find the thing we want to sync with from there. Uh, we'll ask you a set of rules for the sync, like whether it should be one way or two way. We'll also ask you to grant us permissions to sync your data in other apps. Once you've set the rules, you can review and start your sync. We'll bring your data in and make sure it's kept up to date everywhere. Awesome. Is my information safe in HubSpot? Um, your information is safe in HubSpot. Um, you can choose which contacts to bring into HubSpot and after authorizing HubSpot to integrate with your inbox, we can pick up which emails should be recorded in the platform. HubSpot will never email your contacts without your authorization. Um, it is important when you are syncing your emails to HubSpot that you do think about um, how much of a sync you do have between HubSpot and your email. Um, just from previous experience, um, sometimes you can find, uh, or clients can find that they are ending up with more contacts in their CRM than they were expecting. So just be careful when you're connecting emails. What apps can I connect to HubSpot, Data Sync? The full list in our marketplace will go there in, in a minute. You can access Data Sync from every operational hub plan. With a free plan, you can build connections between other apps and your HubSpot account. Share data between them and manage your data in one place. Start with, um, with Starter or Pro Operations Health Plan, you can get greater control and customization over your syncs, like the ability to be able to choose mappings to sync or create new custom mappings. I mean, this is pretty awesome in terms of these being almost native integrations, I'm hoping, um, when we move into looking at them, which might mean that the amount of zaps and um, Integra map triggers that need to be sent, we can reduce, thus reducing our costs um, of using other automations if we stick to HubSpot. So let's go to the app marketplace. 
Okay, so things that actually um, are involved in this data sync by HubSpot. Google Contacts, MailChimp, Outlook Exchange, Zero. I mean, I'm already thinking if this has got some accountancy stuff in there, that's going to be awesome for me for managing my business because I use Zero. Intercom Stripe, I mean, Stripe, I also use for my accounting. So I'm interested to see how I might be able to use those two in the future, but we won't focus on that today. Active Campaign, um, that's very much a lead generation um, outbound email campaign manager if you use that, but you don't want to pay for HubSpot marketing, that would be great. Zoho CRM, I mean, if they're looking to things like integrations for migrations, if you want to migrate from Zoho to HubSpot, but you have or you have two of them running for some reason, that's cool. NetSuite, Zendesk, Airtable, this is what I'm interested in. Um, thinking Airtable rows with emails with HubSpot. Um, Square, Outreach, Microsoft, Send in Blue, Aircall, Ring, Constant Contact, Bullhorn, Keep, Sales Loft, Pipe Drive. I mean, there's lots of people that move from Pipe Drive to HubSpot mainly because Pipe Drive doesn't really have the functionality that to suit marketing automation or sales automation very well. It's okay for like a basic standard, easy to use um, sales management CRM, but beyond that, I haven't found it very useful. Um, okay, Minor Body, Nimble, Fresh Desk, Copper, Magneto, Drip, iCloud, Sugar, I have not heard of before, I'm interested, I'll have a look at that at some point. Great, so let's have a look at Airtable Data Sync. So there's of course lots of information to help you with this, um, you could look at the features um, and, you know, sync the things that you want. Um, custom field mapping it looks like there's a limitation there. So in Starter, we can make manual data entry a thing by, of the past by syncing Airtable records with an email address as an identifier. So that's just, if you are gonna be using this for Airtable, um, make sure that you are using an email address as the unique identifier of your people. I would always suggest that you do that anyway, um, because emails are unique. Um, first and last names are not so much. Um, when recorded, records are created or updated in either app, the information will automatically be shared with the other one. So that's great. Um, sync only the data you want. You're in control of their data. You can set up a one-way or two-way sync, which means you can either sync data from only the app, um, only one app to find the other or back and forth between both apps. You can also add a filter for any Airtable column you've made or HubSpot links to sync exactly what you want and nothing you don't. So it sounds like we have some um, control over the fields that we're gonna pour as well as the direction that the data is going to be moving. Custom field mapping mm -mm 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 -mm, is limited. So um, I will need to explore to know exactly where that ends in terms of our, our ability to like request specific ones. So data sharing, how it works. Each object has fields mapping that connects matching information from each app. This sync will require custom field mapping. Mappings are available with operations hub starter and up. So this is very much focused um, on if you're starting to pay, if you upgrade. Um, and it, you know, if you want to go and look at what's possible when you upgrade, just go on HubSpot and just look at some of the pricing and you can kind of see, um, oh, here we go. They've done it for you. They're already predicting what you're going to be thinking, which is great with HubSpot. So um, oh, no, this is the Airtable data sync pricing. Um, so you can sort of look through here. Uh, uh, okay. Nobody has written a customer review yet, so maybe we will be those people. Right, so let's install this app and see what happens. Okay, so I need my API key. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a little bit just to go and get this. I will be back. Mm -hmm. Logging into Airtable. Find my API key. 
copying my API key and I'm coming back to HubSpot and I'm adding it in and I am going to reshare my screen with all of you guys. Okay, so let's open this and I'm going to go back to screen share and here we go. So I've added my API key and I'm now going to press connect to Airtable. And let's see. So, set up sync. Connected. Airtable sync. Wonderful. Wow. Okay. So, objects to sync. Let's see what happens here. Next step. So, first of all, choose a Airtable data sync workspace. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for our minimal viable stack project, Dennis. Um, so let's find, let, let's find, let's have a look at the experts first of all, because I think um, primary email field, so email, we've got that already. Um, that was one of my stipulations. We need an email feed. Choose the Airtable data sync last modified time field. Uh, I'm hoping that will be it. Fingers crossed. Done. Okay, so choose which records to sync. Use the filters or records. No records. Alpha. Oh, okay. So this is interesting. So at the minute, we have um, different statuses for different people, depending on how we selected them for whether we wanted to bring them into the alpha or if they had a calendar link or if they had calendar tools. Um, we also got the count of the number of projects. So interested, um, prime email. So there's lots of things that we could, we could actually base bringing these people in on. So I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna do an alpha status as select criteria is I can either do is not equal to, is empty, contains, is equal to, does not start with, or ends with, or starts with, does not contain, has any value, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so. Mm, I'm gonna like start with, and then I'm gonna put H. No, actually, actually this one is gonna be just too difficult to show you the difference. So um, I'm gonna put calendar link and select criteria is um, is empty. So these are basically all of the people who we've databased who are yet to add their calendar link to our system. Um, and only sync records with email addresses, delete records, fix Okay, perfect. So, awesome. That, I'm quite happy. Field mapping, I don't think I can access, no. Um, Wow, this is cool. And then I'm gonna press review. So I have an Airtable which syncs to my HubSpot. It's only gonna give me the people whose calendar link is empty um, and all contacts I will sync to. Um, it's gonna use the primary email that we've recorded in Airtable to the, any emails that are already registered on HubSpot. So I'm gonna save and sync. I wonder what happens. Okay, so I mean, this is going pretty well. I'm gonna say this was super easy. Um, the process was easy, easy. I haven't had any issues so far. I am yet to review the data synced, which I feel like is a, a fair, um, no, oh, that's spell synced, right? Synced, there we go. And I will submit that to them. That's nice. I like these little messages, they make me happy. Okay, great. So the sync is on. So I suppose what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to see if this worked. Now, of course, because I'm dealing with personal data, I won't be able to present this to you, but Bear with me one second, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, I'll be back with you. Okay. So I am going 
So the next steps I'm taking while I'm not sharing my screen. It's so frustrating being a CRM manager or an automation specialist because it's really difficult to actually showcase the stuff that you do because it always usually involves personal details and that is really, really difficult to, um, to add. So, oh my gosh, it's worked amazingly. So before I um, jumped on this call with you guys, I had only about 20 contacts in my HubSpot. Now I have 69, which is amazing. Um, so basically it worked. Um, I have now 69 people. I'm actually gonna, I'm interested to see if they have added the field. Um, so I'm gonna go into my properties. I'm gonna start sharing my screen again, just to see what, what's happened here. So let me share my screen again. Sorry guys. Also the reason why I'm totally not on camera tonight is, um, I'm, my lighting is not great right now. Um, and I actually look quite a mess. So just got my voice today. So let's share my screen. Awesome. So screen sharing, looking at, now these are, if you've used HubSpot before, you will have seen these properties, which is, you know, HubSpot actually gives you a lot of the properties made up. So this is the same as your fields in Airtable. Um, but I want to look to see if they've actually added. No, they haven't. Okay, so the HubSpot doesn't automatically create a property based on the property that you've imported users on. It just uses that, which I suppose makes sense. It doesn't say that it will automatically create that property for you when importing those things, although that would be awesome. Um, that might be possible um, when you have starter or more um, but I will do another video when I have um, spent some time on it in starter to see what I can share with you so I hope you enjoyed that video if you have any questions about HubSpot HubSpot operations or just want to talk to me about marketing automation sales basically anything that means you have to do less admin and can spend more time talking to people then feel free to message me it's been lovely chatting bye bye